Hello everyone, I'm Bill Harris. This is Life Questions. As our regular viewers know already, this program focuses on providing answers to your questions about life, specifically with a Christian perspective from the Bible. We have a number of questions from viewers that have, uh, and we have turned them over, I should say, to a group of local ministers to research and to pray over, and they are now here armed with the answers for you. So let's meet them at this time. We have, first of all, uh, Pastor Jeff Kimberly of Neapolis Church of Christ, followed by Pastor Patrick Kamler of Westminster Christian Church. Next, we have Pastor Tim Smith of St. Mary's Church of the Nazarene. And rounding up our panel is Pastor Rich Reiki of the Teens for Christ and Delphus Trinity United Methodist Church. Gentlemen, we're happy to have you with us. Good to be here. Good to be here. All right, let's get, it, let's get started with this one question from a viewer who writes, what does it mean to hear God's voice? Or what does it mean to hear God's voice, I should say? How do you listen to God in prayer? So there's a couple of questions there. Who wants to tackle that first? Nobody. When, when, well, <laughs> when I, when I, when I, I I'd like this, to deal with an issue, but I would, someone else can <laughs> go, with the, go into it. Well, Jeff, you're doing great. Oh, thanks. <laughs> thanks. Hey, when, when I read this, um, my, my thing went to right to the Great Commission right to Matthew, mm -hmm. where Jesus teaches the disciples to pray. Mm -hmm. And he says, you know, when you pray, go into a room by yourself and just sit and be, be still and uh, pray to your father who's unseen. And so that's where my mind went. And I, so, so I thought, well, just sit still. Don't, don't speak. Just, just listen. Just let God's word penetrate your, your mind and your heart. And, and then um, on top of that, it thought, I thought, well, as you sit and you listen, then the Spirit stirs you to where you need to go. So be open to that stirring as you pray. That's how we, you, I think that's how I hear God's voice. Okay, next. Well, I think it also includes, uh, obviously, reading the Word because God's voice is oh, yeah, in the absolutely. Word. And, and uh, one of the things that I've helped, found helpful is praying the Word. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, and using it, as, as, especially in the Psalms. Um, mm -hmm. And that, that helps me hear God's voice be, and helps me pray in ways that I know that are approved. I, I read a uh, very good description of prayer uh, recently, and I can't remember the book that I read it from, but it was uh, being totally honest with God. And I thought that was a, a really good description. Um, so that, that's kind of what I've, I hear God's voice in the Word and, and the being still before Him. Uh, is important as well. I think the struggle for a lot of people is that, you know, if you're around church circles long enough, you'll hear people say, well, the Lord told me, or I felt the Lord say. And for those people who are growing, or for even people who've been with the Lord for a long time, it's like, well, am I doing something wrong if I don't hear God's voice, if I don't hear an audible voice? Or how, how do I know among all the voices that are out there that this is God nudging. And, and I can say probably for my personal experience, there's only been a few times in my life where I have not heard a voice, but unequivocally the words came to me. And part of, one of those was my call to ministry where I felt the Lord saying, I called you to be a pastor. Until you do that, I don't want you to do anything else. And the conversation was over. I can't explain it other than you know, the light went out or whatever it is, but, but the conversation was over. It's like the Lord said, I told you what I needed to tell you, and, yeah. it's, and it's done. Uh, most of the time for me, and this might speak to the person who's asking the question, most of the time for me, it's I, I get a sense that the Lord's Spirit is moving or that there's an affirmation of an answer, and that comes after I've already positioned myself before God in praise and worship and getting my heart right and... and clearing out the clutter to listen, going to the Word, and, and then I'm in a place to have a conversation with God. It's like, you know, when, when do you want to have that deep conversation with your spouse, right? Do you really want to tackle the issue of, you know, how much you can pay for college and, you know, who's going to, you know, whether you're going to move or take this new job when you come home and you're harried and, you're, and it's a really horrible, terrible, bad day, or do you want to decompress, collect your thoughts, think through things. And it's part of it, I think, is us positioning ourselves to hear from God, that we're bringing the right attitude and the right perspective. 
And you mentioned about dealing with clutter, and I think that's a, that's an important part. And one thing that shouldn't be undersold in all this is the fact that listening to God and taking that time is is a discipline that has to be established and, and built up over time. And and there are times where you feel distracted. You you sit and you go before the Word, you go before the Bible, or however you're you're doing it, morning, evening, afternoon, whatever. And for some reason, you know your your thoughts are battling and you just can't focus on things. Something that I have found helpful in that is, you know, Second Corinthians 10, 5 tells us take every thought captive, make it obedient to Christ. There are those thoughts that, you know, I'm not saying that the, the devil's nipping at your heels for every single thought that comes into your mind, but maybe when you're trying to focus on what God wants to say to you or creating that space that you, for some reason, have to balance your checkbook, even though you haven't balanced it for six months, but you have to balance it now <laughs> for yeah. some reason. Take that thought captive. Uh, I, I've, I've even heard some people talk about, um, and I think this is Richard Foster actually, Celebration of Discipline. You know, what is that thought trying to communicate to you? What Maybe God mm-hmm. is trying to show you something about your life. Are you concerned about finances? Is there anxiety? Is there worry because of that, that that's springing mm-hmm. up? And through that, you begin to develop uh, an ear for God that develops, not just when you're in your quiet time, but also you know, throughout your day. You don't have to be on your knees or in your prayer closet to hear from God. The idea is that as Christians, we should be hearing from God yeah. all day long. You know, you mentioned uh, author Richard Foster in his book, uh, Celebration of Discipline. He mentions in there having a uh, perpetual inward listening silence to mm-hmm. hear from God. Does that, does that, does that register with anybody? Sure. A perpetual inward listening silence? How about you, Pastor Jeff? Well, you know, I was, I was, I was going to go back to what, what Rich said about, about the audible voice. You know, I'm not hearing God, so I'm doing something wrong. And, you know, movies that we hear today, we were talking before we came on about, about you know, movies like Bruce Almighty where, you know, you have God's voice. God is not going to talk to you in the voice of Morgan Freeman. So it's just not going to happen. Speak for yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Fine. I mean... But it's, and it's not, it's never, it may not be an audible voice, but it's a peace yeah. that you feel. Mm-hmm. And, 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 and for so many people, when they say, well, God told me, it's, it's that, it's that peace that they felt. That's God telling them something. I have a, I have a leader in our church who says, well, God spoke to me, you know, and, and we joke that when God speaks to him, he comes to church and when he, God doesn't speak, he stays home. And that's just our joke because that's how it works. But regardless of that, um, he, you, there are people who think that God physically speaks to them. And great, if, that's, if that makes you feel closer to God, then listen for that voice. But for the, mo- for the majority of us, it's that peace that we mm-hmm. just can't explain that tells us, go. Along with that, I, I, I may have just, if I could interject, that sometimes I even feel a sense of disturbance when I'm contemplating doing something that God does not want me to go, and he's saying, don't go there, don't go, and you, you feel that inner disturbance. Yeah, yeah. So it, it can, to me, it's been either way, depending yeah. on if how I God leads me. jump out the clutter <clears throat> that we feel, you know, your mind's always racing of different things, and it can be difficult when you go to prayer. One of the things I do is I keep a notepad and paper next to me yeah. in my prayer so that as yeah. things come up, yeah. oh, you need to do this. Yes. You can't be spending time yeah. praying. You're going to need yeah. to do this. I write it down. That's what I do. And it goes I away. Do the same thing. And I have a, <clears throat> oftentimes by the time I get done praying, I have a long list of things I need to do. <laughs> but having written them down, I was able to focus more on prayer. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's right. The, the last thing I, that came to mind for me was that the Lord knows us individually and He speaks to us in a way that we can hear. Yes. So, you know, for some people that's the audible voice, for some people it's the nudge, for some people it's, you know, you know, they, they'll see something and, and they know that that was from the Lord and the Lord was speaking to them through, you know, a bird or some, some image or, you know, they had just had a conversation and now that a commercial comes up that says the exact word and it's like, hold, hold on a second, that can't be coincidence. Yeah. And so how, whatever that looks like, but what, the only thing I would say is as we step in to following God's voice, we open ourselves up to hear more. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I'm walking in the store, the grocery store, and I feel the need to pray for somebody that's in the next aisle over, and they didn't ask for prayer, and I wasn't looking to pray with somebody, and yet the nudge is there. It's like, well, then you kind of peek around the corner and say, well, who's over there? And, and then you say, this might sound really odd, but would, would you like somebody to pray with you? 
and you know, based on their response, you move forward. And as you continue to listen to God's voice, you prime yourself to hear more clearly that it's Him. You know, you talk about signs. So before we came to Neapolis, before we came to Neapolis, you know, my wife and I were praying, oh, did we come? Is this where God wants us? And so in my prayer time, I'm praying that, and I wasn't getting a, a peace one way or the other. And one day I'm driving down the road going to work, and there and pulls in front of me a Ohio car. And I was like, oh, okay, well, you see them all over the place, you know, they're probably on vacation. Well, then I looked down, it was a Lucas County, Ohio car. And that's where Minneapolis is, we're in Lucas County. So I'm like, okay. And I just kind of, you know, coincidence and went on my, about my day. On the way home, I saw two more. Same thing, <laughs> Lucas County, Ohio. And I'm like, okay, God, what do you, so I stopped and I just prayed, okay, God, is this, is this your sign? And God said, yeah. Mm. This is where I want you. Go. And it just it gave you that peace to feel like, okay, it's time to go. Where were you living before? South Carolina. South Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> three Lucas County. And three Luca yeah, and we saw at least that many. Because so. I'm in Lucas County, too, so I did. Yeah. North Carolina is quite a ways. South, yeah, South Carolina is just a little South bit Carolina, away. South just a little bit of a ways from, from Lucas County. So. Interesting, interesting. You know, there's a, well, I, there's a related question. I don't know how much time we have before break, but somewhat related in this regard. Here's the question. My friend asked me if I think her mother can connect with uh, her from the dead. Her friend asked her. Obviously, her mother's deceased. Can, 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 can you connect with your mom from heaven? I really didn't know how to answer. My friend thinks her mother can petition God on her behalf. So you got two dynamics here. One is whether or not you can talk with the dead. And two is um, whether or not there's somebody else in heaven besides Jesus that is petitioning on your behalf. How do you answer that? Well, uh, I'll jump in just because uh, I had a great conversation with a Catholic priest a few uh, years back that really helped me understand why uh, Catholics pray to the saints. And their understanding in that mindset, which kind of sounds like where this is coming from, is that the saints have passed on, and while they might be physically dead, they're still part of the church universal. So when they petition the saints, it's like asking the church to pray for them. That's their mindset. That's their understanding. And they feel like since those saints have passed on and they're in the presence of God, they have greater access. And, and I understand the thought process other than I don't see it in Scripture. Right. Because we have access. It's kind of like why would you ask the clerk at the front desk when you have access to the president's office? And, and now Jesus says, you know... Um, we have total access to Him, right? He is in us if we're a believer. That He is in the Father. The Father is in us. So why would we have to go anyplace else? First Timothy chapter 2 says that we have one uh, mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus Christ. And so we go to Him. And so we have to be really, really careful about what might seem right uh, in, a, in approaching a person and asking them to do something and it really says that our faith is more in the person than it is in God. And that's a slippery slope. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, quietness. Did he scare us or what? <laughs> no, it, it, was, it was funny. He mentioned the, the conversation we have with the saints. I was actually in the process. I had a, oh, I, I still have a sister-in-law, but she went to a, um, to a Russian Orthodox church and she had icons that she would have oh. as part of her, her evening yeah. prayers. And that was the, kind of the same premise is that because of, um, because they've passed on, there's this idea of of higher access and and recruiting more people to pray mm -hmm. for you. Will because kind of the way to look at it. And you know, again, I, I would agree with you. It's like when you have direct access to the throne through Jesus Christ, why would you have or or why would you bother? I guess with looking to recruit others, so to speak, when you can go directly uh, to the Son to get it's to like, the Father. It's like driving in a car and you're, you use your GPS and it gives you the fastest route and you decide, no, 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 I'm going to take the longest way possible to get there. <laughs> you know, it, it, you know my, my grandmother used to say, well, you went around the barn to get there, didn't you? Yeah. And it's, you know, it's that idea of we have the direct line 
to God, why would we circumvent him, go around the barn, so to speak, mm -hmm. when I can go right to the source, yeah. you know? There's also in Deuteronomy chapter 13, Deuteronomy chapter 18, and Isaiah chapter 8, if you want to read those, um, it, there's specific instructions not to speak to the dead. Like, we're not supposed to do that. We're not supposed <clears throat> to try to communicate. We're not supposed to uh, approach them. It, even, even if a person, for instance, says, um, I'm communicating with the dead because it makes me feel comfort or more comfortable with my loss. And who is the comforter? The comforter is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so if we're, if we're, the, it's a slippery slope of seeking comfort some other place and in some other source, thinking something else will assuage our pain rather than God himself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and we just have to be careful not to go down that road. Very good. We'll be back in a moment. We've got to take a break, gentlemen, and uh, stay with us, if you will. We've got more good conversation to come. Don't go away, there's still a lot more discussion to come on this episode of Life Questions. But first, do you have a question for a future show? Email it to lifequestions at WTLW.com or call us 419-339-4444. You can also suggest pastors you feel would be a good fit for our panel. Again, send your question ideas and pastor suggestions to lifequestions at WTLW.com. Now back to the discussion. All right, we're back and we're happy to have you with us. Uh, another viewer has written in a question for my panel and it asks this question. I, I don't think I'm a bad person. I make pretty good decisions, at least I think I should. Why do I need to ask for forgiveness when I don't think I've done anything wrong? Well, I would uh, challenge you to turn to Psalm 139. Uh, verses 23 and 24, where it says, search my heart, O God, and see if there be any wicked way in me. Yeah. And just pray that honestly and let God show you uh, exactly where you have fallen short because uh, Romans 3.23 says we've all fallen short of the glory of God. Uh, we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And, and of course, that's uh, the Old Testament says the same thing in, in Isaiah 53.6, you know, that uh, God has cast... His, our iniquities on the sun. And so the, the, the truth is we've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and we, we, we all need his forgiveness. And if you'll honestly pray that uh, prayer from Psalm 139, God will open up your mind. And that's not just for people who aren't Christians yet. That's a verse for all of us uh, mm -hmm. that we should all pray and let God reveal to us uh, where we need his further grace. Uh, and that leads into the, the gospel as well. I'll let some of the others jump in there. Good. Well, I was just saying, you know, it, it's, are I using my standard yeah. or am I using God's standard? That, that's the thing that came to mind. And so I went to, you know, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, 6, and 7, and I'd encourage you to open that up and read it. But, you know, and Jesus kind of tackles a whole lot of issues there, and, but he, he talks about the human standard and then... God's standard. So you have heard that it was said of old, you should not murder, and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say to you that everyone who is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council, and whoever says you fool will be liable to the hell of fire. I mean, he's going to the nth degree, and it's over and over again about issues of lust and divorce and making oaths and retaliation and an eye for an eye. And, and it's Am I using my standard or the world standard, or am I using God's standard? And when we use God's standard, we always come up short. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and just to piggyback on what you said, it is that element of standard. It's like I'm, I don't think I'm a bad person. Well, according to who? You know, according to. I don't think I'm a bad person either. According to who? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've, we've just my, met, so my wife my, would tell my, you differently. <laughs> but my book's out on you. No, I'm just kidding. But but it, but that's the idea. It's like. To whose standard are we holding? Like, if right. we could invent who we would like to have to get into heaven, we would have our own list. Okay, these people are in, you know, Bears fans, okay, all that kind of stuff. And then who, who do we exclude out? You know, and you have a list for that kind of thing. But God has a, a list of that sense, but it's very, it's very simple, it's very straightforward. As you alluded to in Romans, like, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. 
Romans of three, four, you know, says, let God be true and every man a liar. So if you try to justify yourself before God, you're mm -hmm. going to fall flat. But every single person mm -hmm. has the same access to forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And if you are, if you seek forgiveness through Christ, because the question asked, why do we need to ask for forgiveness? But when you do ask for forgiveness, you are justified, you are regenerated through Christ, and you have that access to heaven, access to um, to Christ, and to live a life that God has called you to live. And you can be free from um, from sin. Exactly, yeah. I mean, you make a great point. The It's it's all about the standard. It's all about where the line is, you know, and, and, and for the bar, you know. And for us, the bar is pretty low, you know, okay, yeah, you know. I have a curse today, so I've done pretty good. Well, great. Congratulations. Here's a cookie. Um, you know, but for God, it's it's not even the matter of it's let no thought, no unwholesome thought come into your your head. You know, and and so where our bar is and where God's bar is are completely different. And when we get to heaven, God's not going to say, "Do you think you're good enough to get here? Do you think you're good enough to walk in the door?" Because our answer is going to be, well, absolutely. He's going to say, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, I, don't, I don't think so. And so, but if we pause and we say, you know, I'm going to live off God's standard, then we know for sure we are certain of where we're going. And that standard that we create comes by our comparisons with other people. Oh, absolutely. And mm -hmm. the scripture said, you know, when we compare ourselves with one another, it's not good. Because we always compare ourselves with people that we think are lower. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's, mm. it, but the standard is Jesus, oh, yeah. who mm. committed no sin. Yeah. And we just don't live up to that. Here's another question, gentlemen. I was thinking of reading the Koran so that I could be equipped to witness better to Muslims. But my friend told me to stay away from it. Is it okay to read it? That's the question. Is it okay to read the Quran for a Christian? For a Christian to read it with the intent of being able to witness to them it, about Jesus. It depends on it, it, it depends on how solid your foundation is. It, yeah. it's, if you have a solid foundation, but if you're if you're new, if you're if you're a brand new Christian, I don't think it's the right move to be reading the Quran because well, you're trying to witness to your friend who is a Muslim, and you're reading the Quran. It could be very well pulling you away from God, and and you, it, it's a very fine line to walk. Mm -hmm. So I would say, examine your heart, see where your foundation is before you go any further. Yeah, yeah I mean, the, the you can, and I would agree with that. If you're if you're a brand new Christian, I mean, get more into the Word of God, get more into the Bible, the, the Quran. As far as a, a witnessing tool, I don't think is going to serve you perhaps in the way that you would want to be served. You talk about being confused. Uh, Islam has a lot of the a, a lot of similar cast of characters as the Old Testament does. It talks about Abraham. It talks about you know Isaac. It, it, it paints a different picture of a lot of those characters, but a lot of those people that are in the Bible. But it still has those in there. So as a witnessing tool. I, I don't think it's, it's necessary. It might even, I would go as far as saying it's probably even a little bit of a waste of your time. The main question is the identity of who Jesus Christ is from what is communicated in Scripture, in the Bible, and what is communicated in the Quran, because those are two very different things, and that really is the, the fundamental fault line between, say, Islam and Christianity. Christians believe that Jesus is the Son of God. The Quran claims that Allah had no sons. Mm. has never begotten or has been begotten. I don't know where that is in the Quran, but that's what they believe. So that is like the, that's the main fault line, and having a more robust understanding of the Quran I don't think is going to help you from a witnessing to a, a Muslim perspective. Mm. It, it might, to me, this is one of those issues, and I could be way off base here, so it's my opinion, but I think this is one of those things that falls into that category, let each person be convinced in his own mind, right? This is the food sacrifice to idols thing for, for me. It's Read it if you feel comfortable. If if it's something that you're opposed to, fine. But but don't judge somebody else's attempt at this. The only thing I would say is don't study anything more than you study the scripture, mm -hmm. okay. because Good. the truth is going to come from scripture, and you need to continue to compare it back to what the word says. And and I'll tell you a quick story. A friend of mine at a local bank here in town in Lima. Um, Got, a, got an award for spotting the most counterfeit bills that came through the bank in a year. And, and they, 
they asked, you know, well, how much time do you spend looking at all these counterfeit posters and all the typical markings and all that kind of stuff that they're, you know, how, how do you find all these? Well, when you see the real thing every day, it's easy to spot mm. a counterfeit. So that's what I would say. When you read the scripture every day, when you're absorbed into the word, it's going to be very, very clear, a counterfeit philosophy, thinking, idea, mindset, or, or approach. And so you, you really need to focus your attention there. I, I like what you said that about that, because you know, I was, as you were talking, my, my mind went to Matthew 5.16, let your light mm. shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. And I thought to myself, yes, and if you're, if you're not in the Word of God, your light's going to be pretty dim. But the more time you spend in the Word, the brighter your light is, and the more people are going to want to follow what you have to say because of your time in the Word, because you, you've dug in and you've done the, the research. And mm -hmm. so, you know... I just want to throw that out as well. I would just add that uh, because the Koran comes from such a totally radically different culture than ours, it's very difficult. I've, I've tried to read it some myself, and it's very difficult to understand um, because it comes from such a different perspective. It comes from a different perspective on who Jesus is, and, and it comes from a different perspective of, uh, of God himself and what he's like. And the... Uh, it's just a very difficult read, and, and so uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend reading it. But again, if you have a solid foundation, and, and this is where the Lord wants you to brush up on something that would be helpful, so be it. <laughs> the intent, of course, is that trying to learn it so that um, the Quran, that is, so that they can witness to that individual. Right. <clears throat> what, about, what about witnessing to those who read the Quran anyway to try to woo them to Christ? What, what, what do you think about that? What, what, what's the strategy you would use to go to a person that is in love with the Quran and letting them know that the Word of God in the Bible is much greater? Well, I think our brother gave the most powerful witness about letting our light shine so that people might glorify God. Essentially, we should live our lives as Christians, as believers, in such a way that we're inviting the Holy Spirit into that situation and the Holy Spirit brings conviction. I, I understand apologetics and I, and I you know, be able, being able to defend the faith, witness to the faith, but true transformation of the heart isn't going to come about through winning an argument. I, I've won a lot of arguments and lost souls mm. because the only thing that's going to win the soul is that you've invited Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction that you didn't bring by condemning somebody, but ultimately we're trying to lift people up. Thank you. That's very well put. We're going to have to end on that note, but that is very well put. Appreciate that, Pastor. Well, we're going to be continuing our discussion on next week's program. This same fine panel will be here again, so I'd like you to be tuned in for next week's program. Until then, I'm Bill Harris. Have a wonderful day. You've been watching TV44's newest locally produced program, Life Questions. Now we'd like your feedback. What did you enjoy about this show and what would you like to see more? Perhaps you have your own questions you'd like us to pose to our panel of pastors in a future show. Submit your questions now by email to lifequestions at wtlw.com or call us with your thoughts. We're able to discuss relevant topics with local pastors right here in the TV44 studio thanks to your financial support. Now is an excellent time to make a one-time gift to TV44 or consider becoming a monthly donor. 100% of your donation stays right here at TV44 and is used to spread the family-friendly, life-changing message of Jesus Christ. Secure donations can be made online at WTLW.com, by phone, by mail, or in person. Again, share your questions for consideration for future shows or just contact us with your comments at lifequestions at WTLW.com. <laughs>